Hello and welcome to TheTechSource.tv. My name is Dan and today we have with us the BitPhoenix Ghost. Now as you may notice, it's a very unsuspecting case. But within this unsuspecting case is quite the rig. So stick around today, we're going to be reviewing the BitPhoenix Ghost. So as I said in the intro, the BitPhoenix Ghost is a very unsuspecting case. As you can see, it's got a plain front plain side all you got is the bit phoenix logo down at the bottom which actually looks very nice it's got this nice like chrome side and the silver trimmings down the edging and the with the arch and those are just so you can see the bit phoenix specter leds if you choose so to install them in the bottom now besides the front being pretty plain there's a little bit of ventilation here and that's really about it that kind of sets this case a little going hmm what's going on here well when you open up the side here and you can change the way the door hinges either way you want. So that's really cool. You just got to pull out some, uh, pull out two little plastic clips and then you can hook it up on the other door. And that's really awesome. Anyways, you um, get greeted with t three uh, DVD drive bays. So five and a quarter inch drive bays. And then you also get one, um, one three and a half inch drive bay, which is really awesome. Sorry, let me just, which is really awesome. And then down below you have one uh, giant vent, but underneath that vent is actually, you push this to the side there like that, and it hinges out. You have a dust filtered vent with a single 120 millimeter Bit Phoenix Spectre fan, and you can install a second 120 millimeter Bit Phoenix Spectre fan. So that's really awesome. With as well on the side panel here, this is uh, soundproofing, so which is really good. And there's vents on both sides of the doors, so just really symmetrical look. And that's pretty much on the outside of the case. So along the top of the case, we find a power button, a reset button. We find two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2s, a headphone, a microphone, a power activity LED, and a hard drive activity LED on top. Along, we find this tray. When you push this open, hopefully I don't drop the case, it being on its side, but we have a nice little storage unit here, or you can also put a three and a half inch drive there. So that's really good. So you got a, you know, an external drive bay enclosure. So if I grab my WD Raptor, the old school ones, you can just slide it up in there, and it's all good. And so it makes it easy, you know, say if you got a backup drive or something, you can put it in there. Whatever you really want to do with that three and a half inch drive is up to you. So you can put an SSD there if you want. You can close it up or you can put your keys and change and stuff. That's pretty cool. Now you move along the rest of the top of the case. As you see, it's got a big vent on the top. And you might notice our 140 millimeter fans just very slightly peeking out. Well, on this big vent, you can remove, again, with these nice push clips. It's got dust filtering on it, which I really don't understand on exhaust fans. So, but whatever, it's got dust filters. So thumbs up for that. But we have two giant 140 millimeter fans. Now you can put 120 millimeter fans if you do choose so, but we have two 140 millimeter fans and underneath that 200, the 240 millimeter fans is there, there is a two by 140 uh, NZXT X60 radiator. So that's crazy that you can put something like that in such a small case. And you'll see that in just a second when we show you the inside of the case. Um, you can also put like an H100 or something like that. It fits actually a lot better, but this does fit as well. And this is like the max for a uh, all-in-one water cooling solution that can go in there. So pretty awesome that we can actually fit one in. All right, guys. So this is the back of the case. As you can see, there's not really much going on here. It's pretty normal. But as you can see, it's got this kind of cool thing where it's like the whole back panel is set in. It's not actually flush. So that's kind of neat. It makes it actually a good grab handle when picking up the case, I find. Um, as well as we have our pre-installed 120 millimeter fan. You can't do any other sizes, but it's got this really good mesh grill that kind of like bevels out. I like it. As well as we got our three uh, punch outs for water cooling tubes if you want, so the pass-throughs. Uh, this looks like they have two step sides, uh, like sizes. So you can have a smaller size or a bigger size. And you probably just put rubber grommets in there if you want. You could probably pick up some that will fit in the hole. Anyways, you also got uh, where our IO shield would go. We don't install ours. Um, anyways, you got seven expansion slots, which is pretty standard. None of them are ventilated. Uh, we'd like to see that. But we do got a big ventilation slot here, which is nice. And a Kensington lock will get installed there as well. And a standard ATX power supply in the bottom. I know ours doesn't match our system, but hey, you know, you do with what you, you make do with what you got. So, uh, but it's all good. And then you also, well, if I had the other screws, you'd have four thumb screws on the back of the case. You got these nice handles here to pull on the side panels. And the other side panel here is just completely blank, as you can see. So it's a pretty, you know, um, you know, simple exterior. But you'll see with inside, 
that's where everything is. Removing the side panel in this case is very easy. All you need to do is undo your thumb screws and then you pull and lift away. On both side panels, we have uh, some sound deadening uh, material, which works very well. It's like a kind of a foam material, unlike some other cases as more of a cloth material. This still works very good. It's got a perforated finish on it, so it helps take in more, uh, kind of helps deaden the sound and make the case quieter. It's not soundproof, but it's, it's sound deadening. So it does help make the case very quiet. Um, I know from, from our testing, when we had the X60 at full speed, there's nothing really you can do about those. The fans are just damn loud and they're on the top of the case. So they're kind of totally exposed. But once the case is in normal, you know, kind of quiet mode, even under rendering, the GTX 480 we have in here doesn't even get audible, which is really awesome because it does spin up a bit and it does normally get audible. So this is actually the most silent case we've ever, one of the most silent cases we've ever tested. Um, it's definitely up there with a few others. But I was quite surprised with this one for the size and considering the hardware we have in it, it was very quiet. Anyways, let's take a quick, a quick walk over of uh, what we got inside here. So we got our t usual test rig. So we got our 37.7K, we got our GTX 480, we got our MSI Z77A GD65 motherboard. We got our X60 in there. We got our 8, 16 gigs of RAM or 1000 watt power supply. We got, you know, one SSD, one hard drive. So a pretty standard build. You know, we don't have a CD drive. I think nowadays most people aren't putting CD drives in their PCs. So... This is what I think is a standard build. It's generally what I build for people. And, you know, two hard drives or two optical, like, you know, two data drives and a video card and all that. So it's a pretty standard build, nothing crazy. But as you can see, it cleans up very well. So let's take a look more in detail. As you can see, let's look at the optical drive base first, our I.O. So as you can see, we got uh, a total of four three and a half inch drive base, which is very nice. So to remove these is really easy. You just pull on this and pull it out. So that's really awesome. If you want to put a another DVD drive, like a hard drive in. Uh, where did RWD go we had earlier? We leave it up top? Nope. Aha. So if you want to put another drive in, you're going to grab your drive. It's pretty simple. We'll zoom out so it makes it easier to actually do it. And all you need to do is you just line up the holes. You know, so many cases do this. Bend it a little bit, bend it a little bit, and stick it in. Now I put the drive in totally backwards. But you can mount it that way if you want. So you want your, your plugs to go the other way around. Not the way I did it. But it's that easy to install it. And it's just as easy to remove it. So that's really awesome if you did screw it up like I did. Now for your SSDs, it's the same, same scenario, just smaller. Except for that SSD is in there. So same thing. The trays are exactly the same. They're just smaller, which is really nice. And they have no anti-vibration because, well, SSD's got no moving parts. But if you're installing two and a half inch drives, it may vibrate. So just an FYI. All the drive bays got ventilation on them, so it helps with the airflow and for the front intake fans to get air in the case, which is really good. So let's move on to our DVD drives. So we have our three optical drives there. And as you can see, they all got two list systems on them. You just kind of push on it and it locks in. It's pretty basic. Should work pretty good for you. Um, as you, as you can see, moving on over, we kind of got our X60, uh, cause the hoses in the X60 and the X40s are really long. So if I didn't have them stuff up in here, they'd be just kind of like drooping down here and look all really ugly. So what I did was I kind of pushed them in here and it made it look a little nicer. And it, well, having this kind of rad in this case, it sucks up pretty much the entire optical bay. So if you didn't have, if you had an optical drive, you'd have them like hanging out here. So that's, that's the only thing. This case can do a 2x140 all-in-one water cooling rad or like a 27 mil rad, no problem, but it's going to be very tight. So that's just a word of warning. Uh, recommended probably a H100 instead or a 2x120 radiator that's a 27 millimeters in thickness um, instead uh, would fit a lot better in this case. I don't think many people will be doing custom water loops in these cases. More, probably more people will be doing all-in-one water cooling loops. So that's just what I think. But it does mount very well, and all the screws line up very good and, and all that stuff. Um, you know, the hoses go up just right here, and if I tilt the case a little bit, you can see the top of the radiator is perfect, and there's just enough space there between the motherboard and the radiator. Um, you can't do a push-pull. The case just isn't tall enough. If it was a tad taller, you could, but you can't. So moving along down, talk about video card room here. So as you can see, our GTX 480 fits pretty well, and you know, still to today's standards, the 480 is still a decent card. It's pretty fast, plays a lot of the games, 1080p, and as well as um, it is power hog, but it's it's really long. Um, it's longer than a standard motherboard, ATX motherboard. 
we got well over a foot of clearance, which is really awesome. So you can fit pretty much any high-end video card on the market. Um, a GTX 680 will fit in there. You'll fit a, six, a 670. You'll fit any of the ATI cards fine. Um, you know, a, a 68, 7, a 78, 70, 7970, whatever, you know, 7950s. Um, you'll fit all those fine, so that's great. So you really don't have to worry about video card room. You know, with the two and a half inch drive here, you get that little extra room. Um, and even still, even if the power plugs were on the opposite side of the video card, you're still good. Now we're gonna move on down. Uh, if you're gonna do SLI or Crossfire, you know, might have a little bit of room for your third video card. I don't think you'll be doing three-way SLI in a case like this. It's just not, you know, in the price range of people who do that, but some people may. Anyways, as well as we have uh, lots of room for a large power supply. And, um, but when you do put a large power supply, you do lose a bit of room for the bottom mounted fan that can be installed. So you can put 120 mil or 140 mil fan. So if you do have a large power supply like us, our power supply actually measures, uh, where is centimeters here? Measures about 18 centimeters in length. So it's pretty big. That's for people who don't understand centimeters, about seven inches. So it's pretty big. That's a, it's, it's a beastly power supply. For most people, they'll have probably a standard size power supply and you can put a bottom mounted fan as well. As, there's a dust filter for it as well. And you, it's all magnetic and you get it, get to it from the bottom. So that's really awesome. As well as just quickly go over the cable management. It was very easy to wire this case. Dave and myself built this within less than an hour and it was just really simple. We just threw it together and it was awesome. So as you can see, just the overall of it and from the pictures I put on face, our Facebook page, you can see it's very neatly done and it came out very well and I really liked how it turned out once we wired it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the case. So we're gonna quickly talk about the back of the case here on the uh, BitPhoenix Ghost. Now, as you can see, it cleans up really well and there's lots of space back here. Uh, there's a few things uh, that I, um, we did make note of when we did the quick look slash unboxing video um, that I'm gonna make note again, uh, but they weren't a huge concern, but I'd still like if they did this. But anyways, we'll mention that in a second. So the back of the case, as you can see, cleans up very nicely, all black interior, pretty standard nowadays. Um, with our power supply, we got these really cool flat cables, uh, which made cable management really interesting. And it's kind of the first time I've worked with cables like this in a long time. There used to be power supplies way back in the day that had cables like this. Kind of remind me of old IDE cables, just a little stiffer. Anyways, um, besides the fact, all the cables for the case were kind of red and black. Didn't really like that, but uh, that's okay. We had the power there, you know, ran there fine. All the cables kind of ran there. We had a few tie down spots. Um, would have liked a few more, not a much, but there's, it's okay. There's these integrated, uh, actually integrated, uh, motherboard mounts, which is really nice. So you don't have to worry about losing your motherboard mounts. Um, but overall, you know, just look, there's a matter of what, three zip ties that clean up this entire case. And it's a pretty bait, like not a crazy build, but, uh, yeah, three zip ties. Look at that. One, two, and three. So you know, the bottom area is just kind of a bit of a disaster, but it works. You know, we were able to shove everything there. And, uh, but there's no cable tie downs anywhere here. It's like completely blank. I think I, like the Phoenix could have put a few more areas to put cable tie downs. There's nothing up top. It's a bit lacking in areas to tie down cables. Like this one, I have to like tie it down to like the uh, DVD drive area. And this one actually I think had a hook. And there's one other hook underneath here, and there's another hook there, but there's very, very little. I think they should have added. Well, wait, let me zoom out so you can see. So anyways, top one there is hooked into the DVD drive bay. There's a hook there. There's a hook somewhere underneath behind there. There's another one there, and there's, like, one there. There's, there's like, very few hooks to hook on to things. I don't think there's any one. There's another one up top there. There's not very many. So that's something I really didn't, I didn't really kind of like, but as you can see, it wasn't a huge concern because... Our build is pretty basic, so we only really needed three zip ties. Um, still would have liked to see more, because uh, more the better. Anyways, but besides that, CPU cutout's massive. Uh, I really like that. That was really awesome. But it's got sharp edges. Come on, guys. It's 2013. How do we still have sharp edges on cases? I didn't cut myself or anything, but you run the risk of either cutting yourself or cutting a cable. Come on. <laughs> it's 2013, guys. Everywhere else was rounded. Why there? Come on, round the edges. You could easily fix that by like, you know, heating it up with a heat gun and then slowly banging it back to fix that. Or you can just hack, hack it off with a Dremel, but you shouldn't have to. Uh, but still, overall, nonetheless, CPU cut is massive. It's huge. It works really well. Now our final test is, can you put the side panel on 
without putting this case down the side. This case, there is a total of, let's get our handy dandy ruler, total of two centimeters behind the motherboard tray, about two and a half, uh, just, uh, just under two and a half centimeters behind the motherboard tray, which is really awesome. So there's actually a good amount of space. But with some of these cables and a lot of cables down there, it's going to make it a little difficult. I, I foresee. So let's see. So we got the bottom on. I have to do the old arm trick there. And yep, one arm. A little bit more difficult than some cases we recently reviewed, but they're a little bigger. Uh, this is definitely one of the smaller cases you've reviewed in a while. But hey, you got it on without putting the case down flat. It works. Uh, but you have to do the cold arm trick and put it down to the bottom, then you can slide up the top, but it works. And then after that, you can throw your two screws in. So there you guys go, back to the motherboard tray. Just quick note, want to mention on the bottom of the case, you got these nice rubber feet, four of them, silver lining, silver trimming there, as well as we got 30 centimeters of room here for two Biffenix Spectre LED uh, bars or whatever other else LED bars you want to use, but the Biffenix Spectre ones work. There's also accommodating holes uh, up here in the back of the case and up in the back of the case for it. Additional ventilation but with a dust filter for the intake. And as well as we have our magnetic dust filter. So for our intake fan for our power supply and our bottom 140 or 120 intake fan. So that's really cool and it's easy to clean this one. This is probably the nicest dust filter out of the entire case, um, which is important too, because you want to make sure your power supply is nice and clean. So yeah, that's that. All right, guys, so that's the Bit Phoenix Ghost in a nutshell. Uh, it's a pretty awesome case. It's something different from what we've reviewed in a while, a smaller case, and I really did like it. It was refreshing reviewing a mid-tower, and it was fun building it something a bit smaller. Um, and it, you know what? For being a smaller case, at first I was like, ooh, this is going to be a little challenging, but it's really good. It had awesome rubber grommets, and they're actually really decently sized. I didn't mention that earlier, but they're really, really good, and probably the best from Bit Phoenix. Um, and as well as the cable management was really sweet. Considering it only had very few cable tie downs, which I made note of, um, it still was really awesome. We only used three cable ties to actually clean up the entire case, which was sweet. Then, you know, that's really amazing. You know, generally I use a lot of cable ties. If you mentioned it, you probably noticed in one of the other earlier shots, you could see my giant thing of cable ties I got over there. Um, anyways, just a few things I didn't like was that the CPU cut out, the edging on it's a bit sharp. They could have done something about it. Come on, it's, you know, we haven't seen sharp edges on cases in a long time, so I find that is like, what the heck? You know, how much does it cost extra to you know round the edges? Um, I think you're. I think the buyers would be willing to pay the little extra to have that. You know, and it also decreases the risk of either cutting cables or cutting your fingers on it. No, we didn't run into that issue, but I could foresee that happening. You never know, it might. And um, definitely with older cases, that happened a lot with sharp edges. I remember one time I built the PC back in the day. I pulled my hand out of it and I was like, what the hell are these scratches come from? My whole hand was cut. And it was from my CPU cooler and just the case had tons of sharp edges. And I didn't realize it. And it was like full of paper cuts pretty much. So it's disgusting. But nonetheless, it's not a huge issue, but it could happen. Um, besides that, the case is really good. Plastics are solid. That's really good. Uh, a lot of people complain about plastics. They're like, oh my god, I hate plastic. It's the worst thing ever. Well, I'm sorry, but plastic's here to stay. And plastic also gives you style with cases and it like lets you do more things you can do than with metal because with metal cases, it's going to cost a lot to do a lot of these things with metal. You know, metal hinges and metal doors and all that. It just makes it really heavy. So plastic, it makes it easier to manufacture and as well bring a lot of cool things to the case. So for example, this door and the sound insulation and as well as the top piece with the top DVD drive bay, which is, I mean, not hard drive bay, which is really awesome. And also the toolless hard drives. And that's really good as well as our top dust filter and our bottom dust filter, and they're really good. So there's lots of dust filters. Uh, the door's really solid. I like how you can open it both ways. So if you don't want it this opening this way, you can open it up and go the other way. That's really cool. Um, dust filters on the top. Really still don't understand why manufacturers do that, but they're there, and there's dust filters on the bottom, dust filters on the front. That's really good. So you're covered for dust. There's no dust in this case. We ran it for about a week or so, and I left it on for like a few days. No dust build up. It was sitting on the floor. I have two cats, and my house is relatively dusty. There's a lot of construction going on, so no dust build up, which is really awesome. So that's good. And besides that, that's about it. The Phoenix Ghost comes in at a good price as well, under 100 bucks. Um, it really varies depending on where you live. So I'm gonna say it's under the 100 dollar price range, and it's a good case if you're looking for something like that. You want something that's quiet with sound deadening, uh, very you know quiet styling. You know nothing flashy. And as well as it's, it fits a lot of hardware considering it's a small package. 
this is a case for you. Uh, definitely checks all those boxes really well. So if you're looking for something that, that does fill those items for you, then this is a case to check out. Check out the Bit Phoenix Ghost. It's not too expensive and it's quiet and does fit a decent amount of hardware. So anyways, guys, my name's Dan and you've been watching the TechSource.tv. If you found this video informative, please remember, please remember to like it and if you uh, and also favorite it if you do choose so. As well, if you want to watch more videos from us and you want them to pop up in your feed, please remember to subscribe and you'll see more videos like these and also our news videos and question and answer videos. Um, right now, we are, I'm on vacation, going to North Carolina slash Tennessee border uh, at the tail of the dragon. If you guys aren't familiar, it's a road in the U.S. Just Google search it, you'll find out. And I'm going to an event called the Wookiee in the Woods. Search that and you'll figure out what that is. Um, so I'll be busy doing that for the next four days. So this video is coming out when I'm already there. And uh, then after that, the week after, I think Dave is going away. He's going to be out of country. So when we come back, we'll come back. We'll take a little bit of a break. But for the meantime, we're going to pump out a few few more reviews and a, and a quick look video. And when we do co both come back, we'll continue on with the new show. So anyways, guys, we'll see you next time on TechSource.TV. Um, as well as for you guys wondering, I am feeling better-ish. Um, so anyways, we'll see you next time on TechSource.TV.